Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mike. Welcome back to another video and today we'll be talking about this thing right here. This is my brand new FPV build for cinematic flying. It's the Armatan Badger 6 inch um, DJI edition quadcopter that I honestly love. There's so much to talk about and uh, I really want to let you know about all these different parts that I've chosen for this drone and how it flies and what I think about it. So let's get right into the juicy stuff. So why did I build a brand new drone, uh, you might ask? Well, the number one reason is because I lost my main cinematic drone in the sea. I did a full video on that, on what happened, why I crashed and uh, what I did wrong. So I'll link that video below if you want to check it out. Uh, but. Uh, I was really bummed about losing not only my drone but also my GoPro. I lost my GoPro Hero 6 Black and they are a bit hard to find so uh, initially I went with a GoPro 8 Black now for this new build. I had one uh, at home anyway so I decided to use that uh, but unfortunately I didn't really enjoy using the Hero 8 Black so uh, I sold it and I went for another GoPro once again. I keep switching these action cameras and it's a, a vicious cycle that I just want to forget as quickly as possible. Now I'm back to a GoPro Hero 6 Black once again. I love how Hero 6 Black works with uh, Real Steady Go and this is the software that I'm using for stabilizing my footage. Uh, but yeah, this is the camera that I will be using for this build. As for why I chose this frame, well not only it was the only one available at the time, uh, you know, during the pandemic there was so much uh, stuff being completely sold out, everything was super hard to find. Uh, so at the time I didn't really have a huge selection of uh, different frames to, to choose from but I wanted to buy an Armatan frame for a very long time since I'm really a huge fan of the designs and also the way uh, they are structured. The lifetime warranty is also something that uh, shouldn't be neglected. So honestly I wanted to, to have one of these frames for a very long time so I decided to just go for it. So it's a 6 inch frame meaning that it's a bit bigger than the regular 5 inch uh, frames out there um, but it still uses 5 inch props. So because it's 6 inch it flies a little bit smoother compared to 5 inch or 3 inch or 4 inch. Uh, so I am enjoying this bigger size of the build itself. Not only that but I really enjoy how the camera is protected and the fact that you can easily adjust the angle of not only your main uh, FPV camera but also the action camera which you have on top simply by rotating this little head of the drone. Uh, it's so easy to customize the angle and now you don't have to print a different angle um, mounts for your action camera. You can simply tilt your camera the way you want it to be and it's really easy to adjust that. So this is one of the other reasons why I decided to go for this exact frame. Uh, the customization is just great, especially for the camera, uh, camera part. It's so much easier to use and simplicity is something that I've been always looking for. Now, when it comes to the stack, I am using my favorite stack, the T-Motor F4, uh, the one that I have on pretty much any of my other builds. I have a couple of different stacks laying around here with different parts. Uh, sent by different companies, but I still haven't found the time to put them on any of my other drones to just check them out. For now, I am really enjoying this T-Motor F4 stack uh, and it flies really smoothly. The drone is just really smooth with them with that stack, so um, that's the reason why I went with this one once again. For props and motors, I am using the Gemfan 51433 props. I keep switching be between the 433 and the 466. Uh, these are two of my favorite props out there, so these are the ones I'm using. But the motors are something that I want to focus a little bit more on because these were not my first choice, but I'm so happy with them. So uh, these are the FPV Crate Booster 2207 2750 kV motors and they are extremely powerful but also very very smooth. So like I said, they were not my first choice. But after trying these motors on another frame um, by a friend of mine, I was really impressed with how they fly, how stable and smooth they, they are. So I decided to just go for them uh, and uh, I am definitely very, very happy with my choice. I'm not disappointed at all. Um, and of course, they were not my first choice because I've never heard about them before. But after trying them out, seeing how well they perform, 
I really don't care about brand and names and stuff like that. As long as they fly smooth and I like them and they're durable, that's all that matters. So for now, I'm sticking with them. They are really, really powerful. 2750 kV is not a joke. So the drone really wants to be pushed a lot and to be flown aggressively and quickly. And I enjoyed that. You might have seen some parts in the video that show you how quick this drone can be. Um, none of the stuff that you saw in the intro of today's video is sped up. It's the real speed of the drone. And I enjoy that, but I'm still trying to find the balance between um, quickness and uh, smoothness and stability. You know, I, I'm always looking for that right balance. I am still tweaking my pits and my rates a little bit, just so I can be 100% happy with how this drone flies. But for now, I'm very, very close to being perfectly happy with this drone. As usual, I'm using the DJI Air unit. I decided to not go for a Vista and just to use my full DJI Air unit with um, Crossfire uh, receiver. As usual, I use Crossfire on any of my drones nowadays because I switched my remote controller from the original DJI FPV remote to uh, the Black Sheep Tango 2. The small size, the portability, and just the power of the Tango 2 is something that I really enjoy, so that's why I decided to switch over to Crossfire completely. Uh, and I'm happy with Crossfire, how it performs, and I'm, I'm also using the Immortal T antenna uh, right here on the back of the drone. When talking about antennas, I cannot miss uh, the True RC antennas here on the back. They are a great upgrade um, compared to the original DJI antennas, and they work perfect with uh, these antennas right here, the stubby antennas from True RC that I have on my goggles. Uh, I had the X-Air antennas uh, in the past, but uh, since they're directional and they're better suited for longer flights, uh, for longer range flights, I decided to get rid of them and just get those True RC stubby antennas because they match better the way I fly and uh, I'm not really the one to go for extra long range flights so they work better for me they're a lot more compact so I can just put my goggles into the backpack a lot easier now compared to what it was before uh, so these are the main components that I'm using uh, on the drone itself I want to give a shout out to secure for sending me two of their soldering pens uh, and these soldering pens help me uh, be a little bit more relaxed when I'm flying on the field because I can now uh, use this extremely compact soldering pen uh, and just throw it in my backpack and it has this XT60 connector so you can use a battery to power it on it's a very powerful soldering pen and it will allow you to quickly repair something in case you crash and you need to quickly solder something um, on your drone. And uh, like I said, the GoPro Hero 6 Black is now my main camera of choice for shooting these cinematic FPV videos. As you might be able to see, I don't have an ND filter on the camera right now. That's because I lost a couple of them, I broke a couple of them uh, and I only have an ND32 filter from Polar Pro and they are the ones that I will be using on this uh, camera. I will not put anything other than Polar Pro on this camera because they are just the best when it comes to flying FPV um, with a GoPro camera. So for the Hero 6 Black, I'm currently waiting for three uh, packages from Polar Pro. They should arrive tomorrow. So starting from tomorrow, I will have enough filters for at least a couple of months, I hope. Uh, so yeah, uh, from tomorrow uh, and onwards, I will have ND filters ranging from uh, ND8 to ND32. So that will be great for me and cinematic flying with this build. Uh, but I am also really intrigued about trying out this camera right here. This is the Insta360 ONE R, but not, not only the regular ONE R, this is the one inch edition which I believe is a very, very capable camera. It shoots in 5.3K uh, and it has the built-in stabilization that I really enjoy using called Flow State. So in the upcoming days and weeks, I will be testing this camera on this drone and we'll see how the results are going to look like. I'm really excited about that. Uh, so stay tuned about that and make sure you are subscribed if you want to see that video when it's, uh, when it's out there. 
Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this drone. Like I said, it flies extremely smoothly. That's something that uh, I'm really, really excited about. It doesn't have any prop wash whatsoever, uh, which uh, is again, something that I've never experienced before. Being such a heavy drone, uh, such a large drone as well, I was not expecting it to fly so smoothly, but yet again, it surprised me and it's a, it's a really nice positive surprise for me to find out how smoothly this drone can fly. I'm still tweaking some settings, so don't think that is the final result of me flying the drone. I'm still trying to, to get used to it as I haven't flown it that many times yet, uh, but only time will tell if I'll be able to extract something amazing out of it but with that being said i have so many places that i want to visit with this drone now that i have a camera and and the filters starting from tomorrow there are so many places that i want to visit and record footage at uh, so uh, yeah should be fun in the upcoming weeks should be very very fun indeed so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are a fan of these fpv videos uh, i know many of you are trying to get into fpv and uh, if you want to see uh, how you can enter an FPV in 2020. I have a full video on that, how you can start with everything you need in 2020. Um, make sure you check out the video below and let me know if you have any questions. I would love to help you out as much as I can. I'm not the one that knows it all. I'm not Joshua Bartwell, but I will try to help you out as much as I can. So DM me on Instagram or just drop a comment down below if you need something and I would love to help you out. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me and I cannot wait to give you more content with this drone and many others, by the way. I don't rely only on this one, but starting from now, I finally can say that I'm back to making FPV content and I really enjoy that. So I'm really excited. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you once again for watching my video. Drop a like if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and I'll see you in my next one very, very soon. Take care, goodbye.